may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Welcome back to the channel. Share, subscribe, like this video. Make sure you put your prayer request in the bottom. Remember, we got the email. Everything's in the description box. Try to keep it as short as possible. We can't read stories, people. We just can't. We don't have time. Like I said, she's got stuff to do. I've got stuff to do. There was just, there's no way we can do all this. So try to keep it as short as possible. All prayer requests go under the pinned comment. There's always going to be a pinned comment under every video. That's where the prayer requests go. They do not go to the email. That is where uh, a lot of the events, and if the short events, don't even send them to email. Just put them in the description box and put it out to Shelly, okay? Because, like I said, we can't go over long-winded stuff. We just can't. I mean, she's got a family, and I'm doing a thousand other things. Just We can't do all of it. We can go through it. If we keep it short, we can get through it. I mean, you don't have to go into full detail about these things. Just try to make them as short as possible so we can go through it, okay? Not trying to be mean, it's just there's just two of us people, and we've got lives. We just we can't do it all. It's just not possible. We love everybody's information and we want it, but just try to keep it as short as possible. Break it down to the most important parts of what you have, okay? Now there's a lot of stuff coming out. <clears throat> One of them we're gonna talk through in death because it's something we've talked about for two and a half years, and it's finally coming to pass now as we speak. Now, first of all, while everybody has got their minds on this goofy debate that happened last night, everybody's looking over here. There's a lot of stuff happening over here. I told everybody not to be deceived by this, and everybody just goes right for it, hook, line, and sinker. That debate was a farce. All of it is. Them running against it, all of it. It's a farce. It's all being set up. Every bit of this is set up. People are going to be so shocked when they find out that this was all set up. Every bit of it was. Because that's what's happening right now. They've got you looking over here when you should be looking over here. And I can prove that to you tonight. Now, unexpected development. This is just happening in the last little while. And it's huge. We talked about the Middle East with Israel being surrounded. Well, it just got a lot worse. Egypt has now, for some reason, started sending brigades to the Rafa border. There has been a sudden, unexpected, serious development in Egypt as the border of Rafa, Gaza. Now, this is prophecy here. I told you they'd play a role in it. And here it is. Due to the nature of the information and the implications of financial commodity markets uh, content, uh, the Egyptian army is massing a significant force in the Egyptian Rafa area, including about 160 main battle tanks so far today and amphibious vehicles along with 140 jeeps equipped with anti-tank guns. As the main body of Israel's army is redeployed to the north, presumably for an invasion operation in southern Lebanon, Egypt has moved significant army resources to the Egyptian border of Rafah. As Israel enters Lebanon, will Egypt enter Rafah? Will they enter farther north into Israel itself? For as its part, Egypt is not revealing, even to the United States, its intentions. U.S. military contacts with Egypt were politely told that an ongoing operation is classified and no further details were provided. The U.S. is miffed. Is this a sort of tap on the shoulder to Israel about the presumed penchant pending Lebanon invasion? So this right here, this is developing right now. Egypt is massing a major army on the Rafa border right now as we speak. And nobody knows about it. It just came out of nowhere. Israel moved their forces to the Lebanon north. Egypt caught that attention and brought theirs all the way to the southern part of Israel. Israel is surrounded on all fronts. 
Sound familiar? It should. When Israel's surrounded, we are going to go home. And that's what we're seeing right now. That's why we told you to keep your eyes open. This developed out of the middle of nowhere. Nobody even saw it coming. Now, we knew Egypt would play a big role because the Bible told us so. Israel, Egypt will be destroyed in all this. So we knew that somewhere they was going to come into this, and here we are. Now, this is what I was telling you about everybody being distracted. Oh, look at that. Look at that nice little crazy thing that was a waste of anybody's time if they ever watched it with that debate last night. Now, this is why I tell you, while you're a looky over here, this is what they're doing over here. Russia invasion in three months. And Estonia and Lat uh, Latvia says the U.S. Well, that's funny, it come out of nowhere. Sending NATO forces to Ukraine before the American elections. Wow. Did we not call that? Everybody, I told everybody what they was going to do. They were going to go in and they're going to go to war with Russia before that election. We've said it and said it and people are like we're crazy and everything else. There you go. The Americans have started to prepare the ground for the deployment of NATO forces. Now, this is why they did that little draft thing the other day and they passed that. I told you that was not for naught. Now, we don't get to see it, but the, I'm telling you, I knew they was getting ready for war. That's why they did that. NATO forces in Ukraine, as they claim that Russia will launch an attack against uh, Latvia and Estonia. Like, remember, I told you, here's another one. Remember, they was uh, sending out those pamphlets to the people in Estonia, and we had people actually telling us, well, that ain't happening in Estonia. Here you go. In the next three months, and Kiev will again be the target of the Russian ED. We told you that was going to happen. This is so far a cry from initial uh, predictions of a Russian offensive in the Baltics in the next three years. Now they're saying it's three months. Russia offensive in the Baltic in the next three months. The U.S. media outlet Foreign Affairs, known as its relations with the U.S. establishment, has published an article, the author of which states that the U.S. agencies have information about a Russian invasion. Well, ain't that perfect timing after that debate last night? Hmm. Russian invasion of two NATO Baltic countries in the coming months. Told you, they had this planned all along. The author cites information collected by the U.S. intelligence from representatives of the Russian elite. Latvia and Estonia are in the spotlight. Now, they had this plan because we told you, we was reading that news months ago. We had people messaging us from Estonia and places. They're like, something ain't right here. They knew. They wasn't saying that Russia uh, were, there, were preparing for maybe an attack. They said they were preparing for the attack of Russia. So they already knew that this was going to happen. It was already planned. The article argues that Russian invasion will likely occur even before the presidential election. Wow. Man, that is news to us. This confirms yesterday's war news, 24-7 rev uh, revelations that NATO intends to enter Ukraine in three months. Well, boy, that's perfect timing. Kiev is a burning desire of Putin. Now, stay with me. This is going to get interesting. According to a businessman which has close ties to the Kremlin. Now, you remember, two and a half years ago, when I first started this show, I told you. What God has shown us is that Kiev will be taken by Russia and Belarus coming from the north. Now, stay with me. Stay with me. According to a businessman with close ties to the Kremlin, Putin will not be satisfied after winning northeast Ukraine. The only result he will accept is the capture of Kiev. Putin has a special, almost mystical relationship with the Ukraine capital, which is considered the cradle of Russian culture. Putin has a special fondness for Kiev, an old Orthodox uh, monastery where he spent almost all of his time during his last official visit to the city in 2013. Lavia is the resting place for many Russian saints and historical figures. Putin even commissioned a statue of Stolypin that now stands near Kremlin. He desires to keep the uh, Lavra may, may explain why Russia has not bombed Kiev yet. Like, not real heavy. Russian's new defense minister is deeply religious also. He has a strong uh, affinity for the, uh, I think it says Lavra, I think. If Russia launches a second campaign to capture the Ukraine capital, is where it gets interesting, 
the Russian military will likely launch its offensive from where? Belarus. Just like God has showed us. People, you can't make this stuff up now. This He gave us that three years ago. Some of the people even farther than that. And that's just happening today that we're getting this. I ain't that God's amazing. Let me tell you something. Absolutely amazing. The target is Lativia and Estonia. For Putin, however, the war in Ukraine is not only or even primarily about Ukraine. Instead, people uh, close to Russia's president say he sees the invasion as just one front in the conflict with the West. According to Russia's elites, the most likely target will be Estonia and Lativia, the two Baltic countries with large Russian minorities. Moscow would follow a familiar plan. First, members of the Russian Federal Security Service will push Russian speakers in uh, either country to claim that they are oppressed by the neo-Nazi government and keep the key and need the Kremlin's help. In response, Russian troops will cross the border and take control of multi uh, cities and towns in the eastern part of the either state, such as the Russian-speaking Estonian city of Norvea. The terminal grab, or territorial grab, I'm sorry, would pose a significant challenge for NATO, an alliance based on principle that an attack on one member is, however small, is an attack on all. By seizing Norvea, Putin will test whether the bloc is really willing to risk a third world war with a square, few square miles of Russian border. A challenge like that could be particularly useful for Russia in a run-up to the U.S. presidential election. All this stuff is right here, people. Right here. The Kremlin may believe that such a crisis would fatally undermine Biden's chances an emergency in the Baltics could show that the U.S. president as a weak and incompetent and proved former U.S. President Donald Trump's claim that NATO is obsolete. Not everyone in Russia believes that a war will end if Trump is election, and it won't. This war will happen because our time is up, and we're going home. Some believe that the war will never end. When one businessman close to the Kremlin told me Putin has grown too far fond of war, which has helped him mobilize uh, society in prison, some uh, uh, dissidents kill others and force most of the rest to flee the country. The war also united the elites, who now are unwelcome in the West and see Putin as the only hope for a good life. What is Russia's response? The Russians note that a direct confrontation between Russia and NATO could occur in case of a direct participation of Western armies in the armed conflict of Ukraine or in other actions that could constitute a uh, something such as a blockade of Russian ports in the Baltic Sea. In that case, there is indeed a possibility of the entry of Russian troops in the post-Soviet Baltic fields. Not only the aim for occupying territories, which Russia does not particularly need, but to protect the border areas of Russian Federation from NATO strikes. They are preparing a German transport network. For three reasons, NATO is asking Germany to immediately prepare its transportation network. Once again, this fits right in all this. They don't do this for no reason. They're going to, this, I'm telling you, they're going to bypass this election. They're going straight into war. This is what is happening. According to a current study, of the, uh, current study of the German Council of Foreign Relations, at least $30 billion will be needed to prepare Germans' roads, bridges, and the railroads to transport troops and tanks eastward. Why? Come on, people. It's all there. The introductory test of the Council of Foreign Relations is just justified military uh, investigation states that German government should create a fund of at least 30 billion euros to finance the most urgent upgrades. Investments should target ex target exiting as well as proposed military quarters and the complemented by binar binaural reports on status of transport infrastructure. Now, why did they just make that simple? In mentions, uh, citing a map, current roads, railroads, and bridges are in dire straits, unable to handle fast, heavy transport. The German language Russia Today comments on the above follows. German ministry are preparing to transport infrastructure for war with Russia. Roads, bridges, and railways are extended to transport troops and tanks. According to the new regulation, even private transportation can be seized by the army. So what we're seeing is a major grab of power. We knew it was coming because God warned us about it. He knew it was coming. And now we're seeing it. We see now Egypt building all the way up surrounding Israel 
And that come out of nowhere. Wasn't expecting it. Something else we wasn't expecting. Bob, there at End Times Dreams and Vision, he's coming across a lot of intelligence also. There now, we're finding sources in all the media. And they're all set talking from the same pamphlet about an alien invasion that's getting ready to happen. And they're thinking they're going to come from underground, from under the ocean or under the ground. You can't make this stuff up. Everything we've predicted is happening right now. Everything. Satan's making his move. And I, kn I knew last night after that debate that was going to speed this thing up. That's why Egypt has now went to the border. That's why we're seeing all this stuff now happening. Because now people know America's fallen. They know. After watching that debate, they knew. So everybody's going to start making their moves now. This is when Lucifer's going to con literally convince these people they got to go to war. That's why I said the rapture is so close. Everything, the UFO invasion, all that stuff, they're all building to it. It's all getting ready to happen, people. This is all pre-scripted. It's all pre-planned, and they're ready to roll it out. We've got to be gone very, very soon. That's just the bottom line. They're at the door with this. People think it's going to be like 20 years down the road or three years down the road. They don't have a clue that this is at the door. Many of them are not going to see it coming. It's going to catch them completely and utterly off guard because they're just so used to nothing happening. But it's going to happen. And that's why we tell you to get on that boat before it's too late. Trust the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Jesus died on the cross for our sins, past, present, and future. He died, was buried, rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to punch our ticket to heaven. It's coming. This is not going to hold off much longer. They're at the gates. I knew, I'm telling you, after that debate last night, that it was going to fall apart real quick, and it's already started. The gates of hell have already started to open. Nothing to fear. Jesus is near. We're almost out of here. But you can see it. We're at the door. It's there. People just don't want to see it, but I promise you, it's there at the door. Pretty soon, all-out war in Europe is going to happen. All-out war in the Middle East is on the verge of happening at any hour. We're there. We've got to keep our eyes open, grab Jesus with both arms, do not let go, because this is serious. We are truly, truly at the cusp of the rapture. It's here. People may not believe it, but here's the thing. No totem is going to rain. I'm telling you right now, it's going to, the fire is going to come from the sky. And it's coming. Be on that boat. Do not miss the opportunity to be on that boat right now. Because grace period is coming to an end. God's knocking on everybody's door. The funny thing it was today, I was talking to Shelly about this stuff. And there was a loud knock on the door. She heard it while we was on. She was talking about some of the emails that was coming in. And a loud knock. She said, was that? I said, yep, that was a knock. Nothing in through there. Nobody at the door. God's just, I'm telling you, these knocks are a warning. He's saying, hey, wake up. This is about to happen. We've got the warnings. He's telling everybody to be awake. The rest is up to you. Listen, he can give you all these signs and all these things that are happening, all the confirmations we're getting, but the rest is up to you. Either you believe it or not. And those that are saved, you're ready to go. But those that are sitting and waiting to see if it's going to happen so they can just keep doing their thing, I'm telling you, gamble with your soul for eternity is not good to do. Get on the boat now. Quit gambling with your soul because an eternity is a long time to be in hell. Do not wait to the last moment. You're not promised tomorrow as it is. Get on that boat today. That's why we're doing this. We're trying to warn God's people and those who don't know what's going on yet to wake up that this mess is coming. People think that all this, uh, the churches are teaching that Trump's going to come back and prosperity is going to rain down on us and it's going to rain gold from the sky. And none of that's coming. What's coming from the sky will be nuclear bombs. That's what's coming. And almost everything's going to be obliterated. But we're not going to be here to see it. But that's what's coming. And Satan's got everybody convinced of the lie. Do not be deceived of this lie. Because, let me tell you something. Only Jesus can fix this mess now. No man can fix it. But see, people want man to fix it. That's why, oh, well, I got to have Trump. Got to have Trump. Got to have Biden. Got to have Biden. Got to have this. Got to have that. It's got to be a man. Can't be Jesus. We don't want Jesus. We want a man. And now they're going to get that man. He's the Antichrist. 
but we're going to be gone. But they, God's going to give them their man that they, they can't live without, that they want. Only a man can fix all these issues. He's going to give them that man. And many of them will take the mark. And I'm telling you, if you get left here, do not take that mark. Because I'm telling you, once you take that mark, you're done. There's no tomorrow. And don't think that that's like right down the road, because it is. It's right. I'm telling you, people, at, we're literally at that part where you're at the restaurant, and you can't get in yet, but you, you can see the food over there. That's where we're at from the, from the rapture and the tribulation. That's where we're at right now. We're almost in to get into the restaurant, but we haven't got in there yet. That's where we are right now. You can believe that or not. I really don't care. What I do care about is if you're lost, to get on that boat before it's too late. Very soon, we're not going to be here anymore, and we ain't going to be able to tell you, and you're going to be stuck here. Listen to me clearly. Don't take my word for it. Go to Jesus. It's up to you. But you go to Jesus, he'll tell you the same thing. He's the one telling us all. The choice is up to you. I love each and every one of you. If I don't see or hear from you again, I'll see you in heaven. Thank you once again for tuning in to Global Rapture Watchers, where we do daily updates here on YouTube, letting you know that we're one day closer to our Lord and Savior coming back. Thank you for all the support for this channel. This channel was created for God's sheep, those that are waiting for their Lord and Savior to come back and get us in these last days. We do updates once to two times a day here on YouTube. Thank you for all your support for the channel. God bless each and every one of you.